Richard has low back pain and neck pain that he's had his entire life. He's flown all the way from Thailand, which he's lived for years, and tried a Thailand chiropractor, which has not helped. Uh, some interesting things about him is that he was vaccinated as a kid, and he didn't speak until he was four years old, which was kind of crazy. He also has headaches, allergies, sinus problems, can't sleep, and he has a weird little thing called depertured contractures. <laughs> Anyways, you'll see the name written in there. We did some tests on him, and those seem to uh, find out that, he, yes, he has some pain. Uh, we took some x-rays, see a lot of issues on there. We have a detailed x-ray report for you to look at. We adjusted him, and uh, he was better in three days. Check his story. Yeah, I've always had lower back pain, pain in my neck. I used to do yoga. I still do yoga. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that, you know, the stretching would help. Would help. Well, I did go to the one chiropractor in Thailand. Yeah, so, so what he did was he had me um, lie down and he basically just rubbed uh, the side of my head, neck and shoulder on both sides for about 10 minutes. And then when you told and him about me, what did he say? And I asked him about what you did and he said, well, that's just the technique that uh, some, some doctors yeah. use. Uh, the claim to fame for this guy, and I begged him to sort of do this video because I have, he's the only patient I have, he has deep, deep trends contracture. I actually printed it because I can't say the freaking name. So if you look right here, it's a uh, familial thing. It's a history. Uh, it's um, contractures in his hands, his forearm. He can't open his hands all the way. It's familial. His dad has it. Brother has it too, right? Brother has it. Too. And brother's had surgery on it. You didn't have surgery, right? No. And it's gotten worse over the years, right? Right. You have low back pain, neck pain. You also have uh, some sciatica sometimes down the right leg. Yeah. And then tell us about your headaches too. Oh, I get, I get uh, f sort of frequent headaches. Uh, some of it, I think, related to my allergies. And allergies all his life. Sinus problem all sinus his life. All, all my life. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And so he doesn't think this is a problem, which I thought was interesting because, again, this has been going on a long time. Uh, sleep issues. And so he says, I go, I sleep fine. And he goes, I only have, I only tired a couple times a week. But he's had uh, bouts with anxiety, depression his whole life. So again, you guys know by watching my videos that when I talk about this, it's not that I'm trying to pick on him. I'm just using this as information for you guys to learn from. Lack of sleep leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to depression. And that stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens because of a reason. And so we started going back into his past. Tell us about your uh, childhood, what you said that uh, you didn't talk for how long? Oh, well, I, you know, I didn't realize it until I became an adult that uh, I didn't uh, start speaking until I was four or five years old. Yeah, and he heard, learned that from his family, right? Yeah, yeah. well, from a family friend. Oh, really? told me when I was an adult. I said, oh, did you know that you didn't speak until you were five years old? I said, I never, I never yes. knew that. And so uh, we can always point this as family issues, you know, struggling stuff within the family and stuff. But I said, you know, maybe there's a vaccine problem here. And you guys don't, I don't want to get into a whole political thing about this because you guys will write all this crap on my site and get all mad at me. But again, yeah. Let me do it politically as correct as I can. So, uh, vaccines have been known to increase the chances of autism throughout people's lives. And autism is growing exponentially faster than it would normally grow. And vaccines have grown at the same rate. Um, he said, lack of speaking is what? Is attached to what? Uh, we talked about autism. 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 autism yeah. I said this and he goes, autism. He goes, yeah. I'm just the messenger. I'm showing you guys what's going on. I'm just explaining how things work and drawing some conclusion for you guys. Um, again, the stats are out there. Scooters, they, they ride those all over for transportation. Uh, and I had one too, you know, going to school. And I developed that in my back. I noticed my back was bothering me more. Yeah, so when he rides the scooters, scooter. he has problems over there. Just trust, please. Tension pain in your back, sir. What is that? Just a little bit of pain, I would say six. Six, gotcha. Go back with this, sir. How about that, sir? That one's probably four. Four? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just stiff. It's not pain, I, I, really. I, I, Fair enough. Just say whatever you want to say. I Believe me, we'll see a difference after we're done. Go to the floor, please, now with your neck. How about that, your neck? That's probably three or four. Go to the ceiling, please. That's about four or five. Four or five? Mm -hmm. Okay, and last one, I'm going to squat to the ground. So go ahead and squat to the ground for me again. And he doesn't have any pain in his back or knees, but his hips a little bit. So I'm come up. Yeah, just like a weak weakness Weak. in my hip. And about a two or three, you said. Yeah. Like that, right? Yeah. Good. 
So I'm kind of working mid cervical on him, like C3, C4. I'm probably leaning towards C4 on him more. Good. See his eyes twitch, guys? He's nervous. <laughs> what was that like, sir, compared to what you see on the videos? How is that? What, what mm. you thought? Not what you thought? Easier, harder? It's about what I expected, I think. Good. Uh, I am nervous about it. That's right. Mm. Good. Mm. What was the woo about? More noise? More pain? A little it's both? just a very strange feeling, you know, to have that done. Okay, just helping Richard up like I do all my patients and reminding him not to twist and turn or he will undo my work. Let's listen in to see how he's doing. I can't wait to hear this patient who's come from so far. I feel a little bit lightheaded. Good, yeah, a little lightheaded. And again, you guys understand that lightheaded is good. Why? Because uh, when we are affecting the brainstem, the brainstem is important for balance. And so when we make them in balance, it feels out of balance, if that makes sense. Okay, this is where the magic happens. Recalibration, spreading that neck adjustment through the entire body. Okay, that was a six minute ago of tension or pain, whatever you call it. If it's the same, it's the same. Just be the it's more or less the same. It's just that I'm tight, you know, my hamstrings. I know, I don't want to hear about that. We just, just, just focus on the pain in your back. So yeah. six still? Yeah. Okay, so fine. Be slightly less. Just slightly less, yeah. Going back like this. That was a four, pushing a five, and where you, you, your face was like, ah, uh, four, but it's a four. Slightly less, I would say, yeah. 10%, something like that. Yeah. Right? Gotcha. Look at the floor, please. How about that? That was a two or three, I think. Two. 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 Look at the ceiling. I don't even remember what that was. Oh, that it's, it's two or three. So sli all slightly less. Slightly right? less, yeah. Okay, now squat to the ground for me. Come on up. That one felt better quite a bit. Good. I felt a little bit more. Yeah. And so you guys are asking why that one feels better and the other ones don't. Uh, it's a close kinematic chain. His whole chain is actually stronger. Uh, the reason why his pain in his back and his neck are still not relieved a lot because he needs to walk some more. And his body is tense before it came in. So it's still tense. The muscles still have a mind of their own. I slept better. I woke up uh, feeling, um, you know, like I had a good night's sleep. How, how rare work. is that for you, by the way? I'm sorry? How rare is this good night's sleep for you? It's pretty rare. Well, I did mention that I didn't uh, need to take an allergy pill. Oh, that's right, that's right. He's been allergic, had allergies since you were a kid. Right. And what about your sinuses? I forgot, I forgot to ask about that. Sinuses are okay today. Came in for back pain and neck pain. Any improvement there, sir? Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit. A little different than yesterday, huh? I'm a little nervous this time. <laughs> I rocked his world a little bit more than... There we go. Yeah, he was definitely tighter on that left side. I would say this video is about skepticism, about being very skeptical, um, going outside your comfort, bo um, comfort zone and trying something new, and uh, Richard has done both. And I came with some skepticism, you know, but op optimistic at the same time. Of course, you would be paid if you weren't optimistic, yeah. yes, of course. And hoping for the best, and uh, so far so good. Uh, I've had a good experience. Well, first of all, with the adjustments, you could feel something's happening there. Perfect, you know? I love that. Um, I don't, I can't really explain what's happening, but it, it definitely feels like yeah. there's a release yeah. of some kind. It's power here. Power coming from here, right, through right. my body, into your body. And, and plus you have some good advice, you know, we're just talking about uh, posture and other attitudes, living, um, your lifestyle, stuff like cool, that. Cool, that cool, cool, really cool, cool. The opposite, a lot of what you said was the opposite of what I was told, yeah. you know, in the past. Again, all the books are wrong and I'm right. <laughs> so, I love saying that, by the way. It's just so much fun. Whew, so cathartic. Yeah, it's been, it's better, it's better, uh, just in the few days that I was here, it's been better. Gotcha. I've noticed. How about the neck? Neck, I would say the same. Well, I've slept better. Wake gotcha. up feeling more, more, more refreshed, refreshed more rather refreshed. than tired. You changing headaches? Well, you know, I've, you know, for the past four days, I haven't had gotcha. a headache. Gotcha. Now, the big thing, sinuses, sinuses and as well. asthma. And now allergies, sinus and allergies. Tell us about that, sir. Oh, I would, you know, I had a big problem. I have a big problem with, um, you know, just sinus headaches. Uh, 
feeling congested. And you took and you take uh, Claritin or say over the counter stuff. Uh, oh, Zyrtec. 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 And uh, have you taken any in the last couple of days? I haven't. Now we are off to see the X-rays down the hallway to the X-ray room. This pink line right here is the center of mass of your body. That center of mass is where your body should be, and so we want to see where your head is relative to that. You see, your head is left of center, yeah. and it's about 8.71 millimeters. It's pretty easy to see, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so that's what this arrow is pointing to the left, just showing where this head is pointing. Also, you have a little left TMJ problem. Your jaw is shifted to the left, which means pressure in your jaw can reflect pressure back into your neck when you grind your teeth, clench your teeth at night. Um, jaw may pop, and those are all associated with the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pressure in the upper neck is associated with poor balance, so that's why I'm pointing all this out. Now, you also see a 14 degree scoliosis curve and a 6 degree down here. Pretty significant curve, and it all stems from right about here, T5 area, and that's the upper part of your back. But again, this is a weakness of your back. It's not the po it's not the cause of your problem. It's a weakness, and this imbalance exacerbates this because if this was important, I'd be adjusting this, and you'd be changing. But you're not. You're changing with just the neck adjustment. Right. Okay. Uh, right shoulder is also a little lower, but uh, essentially this balance is way, way off, and you can see that. So the low back X-ray, uh, center of mass, the pink line. You can wow. see how your whole body is off balance yeah. here, right? Yeah. Gotcha. And so you see how your right leg is shorter over here, and we talked about you have scoliosis. You don't have scoliosis in your back. You have a curve, yeah. but you have pressure, and 11, degree, 11 millimeters is not the end of the world. It's short, but it's not the problem, but you can see how your whole body is falling to the right. Yeah. And so that imbalance causes that torque I was telling you about, and that torque is where we're, we have issues with. Now, the interesting thing about you is that this must have been here a long time, because you also have some arthritis, pretty significant arthritis in your low back. And so this is more than it should be and that the arthritis is actually this little lip right here mm. And that lip is bigger than it should be for your age even at your age It should be this bad because if you look at the rest of them, they're not too bad It's just this one and so this is L4 L5 and uh, I think this is a more traumatic problem There's some kind of postural issue here. That's really grinding this away mm. So it's not the cause of your pain, but it is a result of long-standing imbalance All his low back discs are all really pretty worn out not terrible, but this is Pretty cool. phase two, phase three, pushing phase three arthritis all through here. Um, th see this width right here, this yeah. height right here? Yeah. These should all be bigger and bigger and bigger as you get down here, and they're just smaller and smaller. This is pretty worn out back here. So you've been grinding away on your back for a lot of years, and that's, uh, that's, that's evidence of poor posture for a long period of time. Right. Okay. Again, this is probably what your massage therapist felt in your back. It wasn't the scoliosis. Yeah. It was the muscle spasm associated with this. That muscle spasm is pretty easy to feel, yeah. and so uh, that's what she was probably feeling. Okay. Up here, your spine goes in the wrong direction here. So there's again a lot of pressure, and this is right where the lower ribs meet your back. Mm -hmm. It's the lower, the upper, like this kind of area of the back. Yeah. And so it kind of goes the wrong way. And again, this is all about a lot of just compensation from years and years of just brutal balance issues. Mm -hmm. And so this has been going on a long time. Yeah. This only occurs because it's been there so long. Mm -hmm. Is that the neck should be shaped like this yellow line? It's not too far off, but this is a little bit of a lie. He's not like this very much. Um, people stand in front of my x-ray unit and they always want to stand up perfect posture right. and so um, but I can see the evidence of what really is going on so this uh, line goes to your atlas and so see how this is flat down here yeah this is supposed to be round yeah. there should be a button back here so this is flat because this bone is worn itself off on that bone uh, I see. and you hear that as sandpaper when you move your neck yeah I do you, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. you hear that and so that's evidence of yourself screwing yourself from yeah. Um, what I mean, from doing what? It's because uh, the spine is at a at a, a misaligned, and the structure is so bad that it forces this bone into this bone, and so you can't avoid it. But when you look up, and move your head back and forth, you grind away on it. Now it doesn't mean don't look up; it just means that you're doing it incorrectly. You have to change the structure. Now every time you grind that, you put pressure on the brainstem, which is right here. Uh huh. And so every time you hit it, it's like poking the brainstem. So it's like. Poking, poking, yeah. poking. Yeah. And when it does that, you get crappier and crappier posture. Okay? Now, right here, you see this little white spot in the back of your head right here? Yeah. That's bone growth into the muscle. Again, this is uh, evidence of long standing poor posture. Bone is actually growing into the muscle. Over here, we have arthritis of these joints right here in the neck. So, arthritis is worse in your low back, by the way. Yeah. Um, no arthritis in the upper neck up here, all down the lower neck. This arrow points to the area that I've been working on you all week. That's my focus on you, yeah. that area. And that's C2, C3, C3, C4. And because that is putting the most pressure on your atlas right there. 
Now these arrows are interesting because I told you about your wisdom teeth. Yeah. Okay. Look at that impacted tooth right there. Yeah. That thing is freaking deep in there. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I point that out is because you see how it's pushing on that root right there. Uh huh. And so it's pushing on the root, and so. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom, and there's one on the top too. Yeah, I know. I knew about the one on top. Yeah, but look at this one. This one suckers way, way down in there. Jeez. And so why is that important? The more it pushes on those teeth, the more it puts pressure on your jaw. That pressure on your jaw can, again, reflect back on your neck. And so, um, you know, this could be an issue that you've had so long that that's why yeah, you've that's had issues. You know, it could be, uh, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. You know, this is pretty deep in there and it's pushing on that root pretty damn hard. So that will cause issues. Mm -hmm. So... Um, something, you know, you could talk to your dentist about, but these things are not supposed to be in here. They're not supposed to be doing that. So you're saying that would be better to be taken out? <sighs> Again, in my estimation, I say that only because of the issues you have and uh, the, the where it's placed. Yeah. Now, most dentists would say, don't mess with it. If it's yeah, not well, broke, don't. Right. Yeah, exactly. But again, I know enough about biomechanics that biomechanics say that any abnormal pressure on a bone or tooth Will reflect on your neurology. Mm -hmm. So, is it the answer? Eh, my sample size is not big enough to know ex for sure, but again, it ain't good. How about that? Mm -hmm. Heading back to room two to get adjusted, but first we're going to take a look at how his x rays shape up against a normal x ray and to see how arthritis builds in the spine and show him where he's at. So, this is the way your neck should look like. Right. This curve, which just kind of looks like this, but you see the back here? Yeah. It's not round at all. Yeah, it's a little flat on the Yours, bottom. Yeah, flat on the bottom, right? And so, uh, and no arthritis. So this is how arthritis works. Good spine, bad spine, leads to arthritis, worse arthritis, worse arthritis. You're between here and here in your neck, and you're probably between here and here in your low back somewhere. Now, isn't uh, someone in their 60s would likely... You know, not everybody, no, 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 no. Yours, uh, yours is not the worst I've ever seen by far. Oh, okay. But it's worse than most 60-year-olds. I see. Yeah. The low back is worse. The neck is probably sort of where I would see somebody in your kind of shape, but the low back is worn out pretty bad. Mm. Yeah, more than I would expect. Arthritis. Yeah, again, it's just because of your posture. It's, your, it's the size of your body, it's the way you carry yourself. Does it, does it have anything to do with uh, riding a motorbike for uh, 13 years? No, no, that's not, the, that's not the case. It's the way, because the riding a motorcycle, no, it's not that, it's the way you walk. Okay. It's the way you move. Right. Because again, what is, are you on the motorbike 5% of the day? You're walking, standing on your feet, way more yeah. percentage yeah. of the day. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of stuff wears on you way more. Mm. Right. There I go. Mm. Good. Okay, a little more nervous today than uh, this afternoon, this morning. Mm. Okay. Hey, you always complain about his hamstrings, but tell us about your back pain. That was a six or seven a couple days ago. That feels fine. No pain. Yeah, one or so, two. And he's had pain forever in there. I go back like this. And this has been a two forever. And where are we at with this now? One now? The same one. One. So that was, I think, a five the, the very first yeah, day. Five or six, and six. this is the cool one. This is what he keeps uh, really loving is go ahead and squat to the ground, please. And he had weakness in his hips, two or three out of ten pain. And now come on up. Yeah, that feels that feels a lot better. And tell, tell him what that I mean, feeling is. What Because you had... You had weakness, you said, in the hips. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I felt, you know, before it was weakness, I had trouble, you know, lifting myself up, and now I feel like it's it's easy. And the pain that's there is... Yeah, no, yeah, no pain. And I, did I touch your hips at all? No. Did I stretch your hamstrings? Did I stretch your quads? Did I touch anything below the neck? No. Good. Yeah, not his girlfriend. So, uh, 